G'day, I'm Steve from Melbourne, Australia, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. Good morning, my fine friends. And all you other not so fine people. There's gotta be at least one of you in there. That's fine, it's cool. That's cool. We're getting ready to go here in Iowa. Iowa nothing. Iowa you nothing. Just in our free trip, we are set and ready to rock. It is cold. It's only minus 16 Celsius, but it feels a lot colder because it's windy. Again, we cannot get away from the wind. It's a little bit frustrating already. Every day. Windy, windy, windy. It's been a windy winter. Windy winter. So let's get a move on here. I believe this is Mount Pleasant, Iowa. I believe. I do believe, I do declare, I might be wrong, so Just leaving that possibility out there. So I grabbed fuel last night already because I don't like going to bed in the cold winter with empty fuel tanks. It's not a good idea. We do have diesel additive in our tanks, uh, anti-gel with power service so that we don't gel up. Tennessee up to Fort McMurray, Alberta. Meters. Take the freeway entrance on US 218 North IA 27 North. It's a cross continent trip. So I've been thinking about that video I made a couple of weeks ago talking about how I don't run with a CB radio. I read all your responses. <laughs> I, I hear you, I hear you, and I still have a CB radio in my truck, it's just not turned on. And I actually don't have CB antennas on my truck either, I took them off, because I didn't use them enough. And uh, one of them was broken, so I just took them both off, because I didn't want my truck not to be symmetrical, I didn't want just one antenna. I, it has to be balanced, otherwise I go nuts. And uh, I didn't want to spend the money into a new antenna, because I don't use it. Hey! Okay, threw a snowball at me. There's car, dude. <laughs> Did he crack my windshield? No, we're all good. Okay. Anyway, we, uh... It is a good idea to run with a CB in your truck. You know, there are some shippers and receivers that uh, communicate with the drivers through them. It is good to have it on. Uh, some drivers will be nice and warn you about, you know, wildlife up ahead on the road other drivers will just you know be bullies bully you or they'll just get mad and try to start fights or they'll just tell dirty jokes on there or there's a lot of garbage that's that's the reason I, I told you that's why I don't run with CB on but it it is good you know when I get my new truck I'm thinking I'm hoping for about five years when I can pick up my Kenworth W900 I'm hoping for a, a brand new one, full full warranty. But we'll see. I want to pay the majority of it out in cash, so I've got to save up for several years. And I've also got a bunch of other debt to pay off as well. Well, not a bunch. I got a little bit. We'll be pretty much debt free aside from our house in a year or two. Probably go two years, and we'll just have our house left. But. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I don't get myself in over my head. I'm trying to make sure that uh, I get the truck that I want. So I want to buy a truck that's going to be mine for the majority of my career, my, my working life. I'd like to have it for a good 15 years. Maybe buy one more truck before I retire. Maybe I can even keep it rolling for 20 years. Uh, if you take care of it, maintain it, and rebuild it along the way, get fresh warranty on it that way. 
yeah, and once, but anyway, once I get this truck that I want, my dream truck, I, I don't want to be driving this minivan forever. I want an actual truck. Kenworth W900 Studio Sleeper, you know? Truck that I love to look at. Once I get that, I'll have a CB radio in there. I'll have the antennas on there too because I'm going to want that truck to look good. I'm going to want it to look symmetrical and I think it looks good with the antennas on there if they're the right kind. And uh, of course I'll have a CB radio in that truck then. I'll probably hook mine up in here sometime soon too. I mean, I read all your comments and I, and I hear your arguments about the CB radio. It is a good thing to have. You should have one. I should have mine on as well. I'd have to buy CB antennas and stuff to get it hooked up. It's just in Canada, especially out in Western Canada, it, you never really use it. You know, a lot of the drivers in Canada don't even speak English, so I can't communicate with them. Uh, they And in Quebec, uh, they use a different channel, but they all speak French there. can't communicate with them there either. So the only time you can really use it and where it's used properly is in the United States. That being said though, it would be nice to have one so I can communicate like this guy with this guy going past here if I needed to. So I know I was a little harsh on the CB there. I was trying to get a discussion going in the comments and boy did it ever work. <laughs> but I'll, I'll hook mine up. I'm still dreaming of my truck that I want to buy. I'm saving up for it. Like I said, I want to pay a good chunk of it. I'd love to buy it out in cash. That'd be awesome. No payments. But <laughs> we'll see if I can ever pull that one out of dreamland into reality. We'll, we'll see. But I'm thinking five or six years, maybe six years, possibly seven, less than 10 years though. I want this truck to keep running until then because I'm going to put as much money away as I can pay off all my other stuff first, put away money for the truck, buy the truck, hopefully have no payments on it after that, with full warranty. Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, this is my, my financial, my, my plan for the future. Plans never go as planned. You should remember that. But we'll see. Like I said, when I buy a new truck, the W9, I want to have it with everything that I need on it, that I want on it. I want it to have an APU that keeps the truck warm in wintertime, keeps it cool in the summertime without the engine idling. I want it to keep the engine warm throughout the night and the batteries charged so that on a cold night I don't have to idle my truck. But the APU will just, you know, keep me good to go in the morning so I can start it up and go. And I want to have a, a beautiful enclosed headache rack, polished chrome behind my truck. If there is space on, on my frame between my truck and trailer, if there's space, I would like to have an enclosed compartment for a narrow motorcycle, like my motorcycle. So it's gonna be a custom custom piece I put on the back there. That's what I'm hoping for. If I can't put that on, I am gonna have that beautiful polished chrome enclosed headache rack so all my chains and equipment stay dry and clean. I also want to have uh, proper storage compartments for my tarps on top of that. So slowly as I go throughout my life, as I drive day to day, look at other guys' trucks, and I decide exactly what I want. I want exactly what I want on my truck, and then I'm going to make that truck run for 15, maybe 20 years, at least 15 years. That's enough uh, bouncing around in the world of Josh's dreamland. Let's get back to reality here. It's cold. We're in Iowa, still headed north. And it was funny talking to people at the truck stop last night. It was like minus 16 Celsius, which isn't that cold. It's probably like around zero Fahrenheit. I don't know, somewhere in there. And they were talking like they were at the top of the world. Like who would live north of here? This is the top of the world. You're only in Iowa, man. You got half of the United States above this yet. And then you got a whole country bigger than the US above that yet. That's where I'm from. Uh, you're from Canada, how do you live up there? You bundle up. We're into Minnesota here. We're taking a little bit of a detour. Looks like there was an accident on the interstate and traffic was backed up and not moving. So I took the exit. 
took a look at the good old Googles and realized that, hey, I could just take this road and it goes right around the accident. It's not even that far out of the way. All I did was go about a quarter mile west of the interstate and this road runs parallel to the interstate just off there to our right. Takes you right around the accident. A lot of people were just sitting on the highway, Four kilometers, twiddling their thumbs. Right on, CR13. I'm going around. This is sheer ice here, though. We got to be careful. Yikes! Yeah, they need to salt this. This is gonna get. This is gonna be a pretty busy road as more and more people realize that they can go around the traffic jam. I can see the accident off to the right. I know it's out of view of the camera. Looks like there's a semi that's jackknifed across the road. Oh, lovely. They are letting traffic squeak by one car at a time very slowly by the looks of it. But it's still a lot quicker just to go this way. I don't know why more people hadn't realized this. It's like people don't realize all the technology they have at their fingertips, right? They, they don't make use of it properly. I have all of these gizmos and gadgets in here. You pull over real quick for two seconds and it'll tell you exactly where to go, how to get around it, where the traffic jam starts, where it ends, how much time you're going to have to wait approximately if you stay on the highway or how much time you'll save by taking a detour around, if it's a truck route or not, if there's any low bridges, like all this stuff. Less than five seconds, I knew this route was here. Some people, I guess, would just rather do it old school, you know? Sit there and wait and waste time. Pull out the old paper map. The old atlas. Remember those? I remember those when I was when I was a kid driving, uh, when my dad was driving. Wow, this is icy though. Gotta be careful here. <laughs> this is a skating rink. You can play hockey on this road. Still faster than the highway. I'm surprised they haven't salted this yet. This ice is from yesterday already. They had ice rain yesterday. And it's already 4.30 in the afternoon the next day. They still haven't salted this. There's people that live down here. If this was in Canada, I would be furious already if no one's salted. Salt trucks are usually pretty quick to come out. Usually. One kilometer, turn right on, 115th Street, CR13. Alrighty, Karen. You don't want to touch the brakes if you don't have to on ice like this. Do everything you can, keep a slow, steady hand on the wheel. No sudden movements. You don't want to give your tires any excuse to start slipping. In 300 meters, take the entrance to the left on I-35 North. Back to the highway. Mm, sure beat a lot of that traffic. I can see them still way down there. Good. It feels good when you take a shortcut that actually was a shortcut. Actually saved time. So often you try to take a shortcut, it ends up being longer. It's risky getting off the highway sometimes. Hopefully they have the interstate a little better salted than they do their US highways parallel to it or their on-ramp here. This is all sheer ice still. Hear that? No traction. Easy does it. Nobody's moving real quick. Moving pretty slow. Road looks just wet though. Oh yeah, the road's fine. They have this salted nicely. Continue on this road for 133 kilometers. I bet you anything though, all these people saw that truck jackknife back there and 
are now scared out of their minds to drive. Mini happiness, where everybody's so happy all the time. Mini happiness. This is a big city, and you know, like I was telling you before, I was talking to those people in Iowa yesterday. They were talking like they were at the top of the world and asking questions like, how can anybody live north of here? Minneapolis is a massive city. Massive city. You gotta wonder why so many people decided to settle here in Minnesota when they have the legal right to live in Florida or Texas anywhere warmer keep to the left on at 494 see i don't have that i could move to the lower mainland of bc if i was a millionaire buy a small little condo there for a 10 million dollars or i could move to toronto or you know southern ontario if i was rich also the cost of housing is so expensive in those places though because those are the only places in canada where the weather is kind of decent all year the legal right to live around palm trees I mean I wouldn't be living in Minneapolis <laughs> I mean I understand all these people got jobs here and lives and stuff man I'm sure there's jobs in Texas too One kilometer. Keep to the left on at 494. this is now Fargo North Dakota the truck is acting as expected in cold weather the temperature here right now is minus 19 Celsius the wind chill as I'm flying through the air has got to be like minus 60. So far the truck's still running. We're going to be stopping here at the Flying J if there's a parking spot somewhere nearby. I'm going to go, uh, go to the shop in the morning and buy a spare fuel filter. Just in case if this fuel that I bought in Iowa and a little further south, that uh, if it starts to crystallize on me or anything as far as plugging up my filter that I can just quickly swap out the filter and throw some 911 in there to keep this truck running. I've learned my lessons. So uh, it should shouldn't be a problem though because it's getting warmer. This is gonna be the coldest night all week. It's supposed to go down to a low of minus 21 yet Celsius. Oh my wipers. I know it's cold. I know I don't like it either. We'll get you fixed soon. Don't worry. Two kilometers. Slide right on. I twenty nine south. US eighty one south. That's right. I gotta get in here. Yeah, we're gonna go see if we can find a parking spot. I'm gonna fill my tanks up with fuel first, just to make sure I go to bed with full tanks of fuel. Less chance that anything will crystallize or gel up then. We'll uh, catch up in the morning again. Just pulled on I-29 southbound now, and I'm really giving it some gas, giving it some fuel. Sorry, this thing doesn't run on gas. Really giving it some diesel. <laughs> Just to make sure my fuel filter is still completely clear. 600 meters, take exit 62, 32nd Avenue South, and then turn right in 510 meters. If my fuel filter was plugging up from gelled fuel from it being so cold, when I really stepped on it like that, I wouldn't have full power because it, it, the, the engine's pretty much starving itself at that point, right? So you can you can tell if your fuel filter is starting to plug up then. And I'd rather test that here and now where I'm close close to shelter and warmth. But it looks like we're all good. I mean, we'll do the post trip and check it all out. Uh, and in the morning. In 400 meters, turn right on. I might even. 32nd Avenue South and then approaching destination on the right side in 160 meters. I was thinking of just throwing a new filter on there tomorrow anyway, but. Is there any parking spots here for me? Eesh, it looks pretty full. It looks full. Oh, goody. Oh, this is sheer ice here too. Whoa. Look at that. Those lights glaring off that ice. Whoa. Take her easy, Trucker Josh. Take her easy. No sudden movements. Slow, fluid movements. Approaching destination in 100 meters on the right side. So fill up our tanks and see if we can find a place to park. Thanks. 
everything looks You have okay. arrived at your destination. On the right side, flying J Travel Whoa. Plaza number 685. Whoa. <laughs> even slower, Josh. Even slower. You almost kissed the snowbank there. Easy. Easy. Surfaces are as slippery as they appear. Well, we've got ourselves tucked away in a tight little spot here. Another guy right here, but it's pretty easy to get out from here, so I shouldn't have any problems. He shouldn't have any problems getting out. The guy beside me there shouldn't have any problems getting out. Should all be one big happy family in the morning, right? So that's that. Diesel, what did you think of today? It was cold, man. Cold. Colder than a witch's, a witch's, a witch's something. What? I forget the joke, man. Forget the joke. Hey, just forget it. It was cold. You gotta work on your delivery of your jokes, Diesel. You gotta remember those punchlines. That's, that's the part that's funny. I know, man. Do you mind if we just take a quick bathroom break, like two seconds? Yeah, it's gonna be about two seconds, okay? You do your business as quickly as you can so we can get back in here to the warmth. And go back there and go to bed, okay? Yeah, you got it, man. You won't call fight me on that one. Hey, do you miss mom? Do you miss Chevy? And Frankie? And Wiener? You miss them all? I miss them all, man. All of them. So thanks for joining me on this journey. Glad we found a parking spot. I'm really happy about it. Really happy. Like, I'm pumped. I thought for sure it was going to be packed here. But there's actually a couple more parking spots available yet. This was just the easiest one to get into. And it was the one that I figured was the safest. As long as this guy doesn't... Oh, he does have a big rear end on him. Because if this guy here tries to swing out to the left really quickly, or really hard, he might take off my front bumper. Hmm, let's hope not. So he's got like, a, he's got his axles set pretty far forward on his trailer, right? So when he makes a left turn out of here, like this guy here, the driveway is this way to the left, right? So he's gonna want to make a sharp turn this way. I don't know if you can see it or not, but his axles are pretty far forward on his trailer there. It means his rear end is going to swing out and take my mirror off. So we're going to uh, take a good look at his company name there. His unit number. And we're going to trust our handy dandy 24 hour surveillance system right here. And if anything happens, I got you on video, buddy. You don't touch my truck. To the rest of you, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.